Hey guys, today I'm super excited to talk to you about Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Now this movie is more than meets the eye. I know, I know I regretted it as soon as I said it, but I had to say it. But listen, this movie is fun. It's been a hot minute since we've gotten a good Transformers movie, excluding Bumblebee, which I really enjoyed. I love me some Haley Steinfeld though, so maybe that has a little bit to do with it. I don't know, but listen, I actually had a lot of fun with this movie. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely some issues with Rise of the Beasts, which we will get into, but let's start with the positive stuff. First of all, Mirage is like, listen, I love you, Bumblebee. You will always have a place in my heart, but Mirage is like starting to be my favorite Transformer. I know, I know, it's like blasphemy, but he's fantastic, and Pete Davidson is so good and so funny, and the comedic timing really, really hits. Plus, I really love the story of Mirage and Noah, right? They're the new Sam and Bumblebee, the new Charlie and Bumblebee, right? That is what this movie is about. Yes, it is billed as a Maximals movie. That is not what it is, and we will get into that a little bit later as well. Um, this really is a story about Noah and Mirage. Yes, we get the Maximals. We do, and they look awesome, uh, but there's just not enough of them to make me feel like this should have been called Rise of the Beasts. Again, we will get into all of the negatives later, but that's kind of my first initial thoughts. I will say something else I loved about this film is the big, massive, epic action sequences, which is literally what everyone wants in a Transformers movie, right? You want to come in and you want to hear those sounds like the do 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 right? Um, it's probably a horrible impression, but you know what I mean? Sound design is incredibly important in a film like this, and then you need amazing visuals and big, epic robot fights, right? Robot v robot. Let's throw a human in there every once in a while and just have an absolute blast. And that is exactly what this movie does. Now, true to these types of films, right? I'm talking like kaiju movies and yes, Transformers films. The human side, the human story is always a little like generic, right? They, the writing isn't the best. There's some cheesy-ish dialogue. It's predictable. There's some things that drive you absolutely crazy. Not a spoiler, but there's something in here. And I'm like, you're telling me no one touched this dang thing in like hundreds of years? No, 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 no. Dumb. Dumb little plot things, generic things, things like that that kind of like bother me. Like, I'm like, there's no way that's accurate. Anyway, uh, I could go on and on about that part. You guys don't know exactly what I'm talking about when you see the movie. Again, it's not a spoiler, but like, come on. Like, use smarter writing. And here's the thing, okay? Anthony Ramos, he's fantastic. He's so good as Noah. He is phenomenal. And I love me some Dominic Fishback. I do. But her character is so underused. And I feel like they just don't know how to write for women. Because like, she's just kind of like there hanging around. And then like, they need her every once in a while. And she gets thrown in there. And she has like her moment. But then it's like quickly out the door and they move on to something else. And I mean, I think she's great. I just think very underused character. Noah really is the main human character here. And even his story, and even this plot is a little bit generic, right? It's predictable. We know where things are going. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not fun, though. It doesn't mean the journey isn't an absolute blast, because it is. Like I said, the fight sequences are so good. The transformations, right? The literal transforming is so good, because you've got these amazing, like, car chases, of course, when the Transformers are cars. Uh, but then you have the big, massive robot fights, with feel, which feel like massive kaiju fights. They're incredible. Uh, there's one that takes place at the museum towards the beginning, which is just so good and so fun to watch. And then they do throw in these emotional beats right? So if you haven't yet watched Bumblebee, I highly, highly recommend checking it out before you watch this movie. You don't need to. It is not necessary. They will let you know the little bit of what happened in that movie and you are fine. Listen, the Transformers are stuck on Earth right now. The Autobots are stuck on Earth. It's been seven years, right? Seven years and that since the Bumblebee movie. And that's fine. That's really all you need to know. They go over it with one line and you're good. However, I think you'll have more of a connection to this version of Bumblebee if you do watch the Bumblebee movie, which will pay off uh, when certain things happen in this film. Now, like I said though, Mirage really is the star of this movie. It's the Mirage and Noah show, and that is what is so good about this. It's their humor and their heart, and the two of them together are so fun, uh, and so, like, I love the relationship that they build, and they really, really shine in this movie. Also, Listen, I said there's not enough Maximals, and there's, there's a fair amount of Maximals, but this movie is two hours and 16 minutes long, and it is literally called 
Rise of the Beasts. So you almost expect a lot of them. Now, you kick off with them, you see them at the very beginning, they're the first scene, and then you do get them sprinkled throughout, and especially in the end, right, the third act fight is massive, it's huge, you get everyone involved, which is exactly what you would expect and exactly what you would want, but there's just not enough of them. They don't, like, ever transform, which is a little frustrating, um, but, you know, there's enough transforming going on, I get it, but it's the Transformers, and this is called Rise of the Beasts, and this is what I want to see. But you get the animals, and it's cool, and they're awesome, and they're badass, right? And they look incredible. That's the thing. This budget all went into the visuals. Everything looks amazing. Well, almost everything. For some reason, they decided, like, this giant portal and this, like, lava stuff in the third act, they were like, I feel like we can skimp on this and uh, we can use our full budget for these amazing robotics and so that it looks incredible and this epic sound design and we're going to have massive fights and explosions and no one's really going to be looking at those so it doesn't matter what they look like. They are, like, there were moments where I was like, I feel like I know people who could make this look better on the computer. Maybe not myself, but I know people who could just on, like, their home computer. So I don't know why they went that route. It just feels like, Again, they blew all their budget on the other stuff. Maybe they thought it looked good. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't take away from the story. The story, it, it doesn't take away from the epic battles. Like, it's still fun. You still feel like there's high stakes and the pressure's going on, even though you kind of know where things are going to end up. But it is what it is. I don't know. That was something that kind of took me out of it, right? That when the portal opens up and there's, like, things coming out of it, I was like, what is this? This looks awful. Um, it's whatever. I also found it to be very interesting that they had Unicron be, like, the big bad already right? It's very early on in this reboot and they're like, here, let's throw this massive big bat out there. This, this thing that literally eats planets, right? This is Galactus, okay? If you're looking at Marvel stuff, like it is shocking to me that they have, have Galactus and his heralds basically being the first real big bad, um, of this rebooted Transformers franchise. But it all played out really well. It was done incredibly, and I'm very, very excited to see where things go from here. Speaking of the ending of this movie, I mean, jaw on the floor, what mind blown, kind of like I never expected this to happen, and I'm very excited to see uh, what comes in the future. There is a mid credit scene that is hilarious and absolutely worth sticking around for. There is no end credit scene, so don't worry about that. Now listen, like I said, this thing is two hours and 16 minutes long. It's it's too long. There's a solid 20 minutes that could have been cut out of this movie. Um, there's a lot of filler. There's a lot of stuff that just didn't need to be a part of this movie. However, like, I'm not mad at all the stuff we got because they do cram a lot of Transformers in here, right? There's a lot of Autobots. There's a lot of Terracons. And there's uh, a lot of Maximals, right? A fair amount, anyway, of each of these. And they all come together and they throw them together and it's massive. And there's so many of them. And so many feel underused already. Um, and then, of course, we even get Elena, who feels underused. One of the, like, two humans. Well, three if you count Noah's brother. Um, but it, it, Chris is his name. And he's fantastic. He's in it very briefly. And, of course, um, Noah and Chris's mother as well. Fantastic. Great. Okay? The humans did what they were there for. My point is... I don't, I, I feel like they could have cut 20 minutes and made the pacing and made things flow better. But at the same time, I feel like so many people were underused that I get why they didn't go that route. And they gave us um, a movie that was so long. Listen, Transformers <laughs> Rise of the Beasts gave me exactly what I wanted. I wanted big, massive, epic battles with robots going head to head. I wanted a little bit of heart in there. I wanted some emotional beats that would make me tear up. And we got those. Uh, and I wanted to laugh my butt off. And I did because Mirage is so funny. And like I said, I love Bumblebee. I do. Bumblebee has always been my favorite. He's he's like a fan favorite. Everyone loves Bumblebee. Um, and I love the song choices they use for Bumble Bumblebee to speak in this film. But Mirage really just steals the show. And especially that connection that Mirage and Noah have. It feels like the next Sam and Bumblebee and I'm excited to see what happens from here but it's just I just I don't I don't know I had fun there's there's some things that fell flat absolutely again it's too long there's some plot points that really made me mad that I'm still mad about I saw it yesterday and I'm still fuming over these decisions that were made um but it was beautiful to watch it's beautiful to listen to I mean this movie deserves to be seen on the biggest screen possible with the best sound system possible I say check out Transformers Rise of the Beast. If you love Transformers, you're going to love all the nods, the Easter eggs, the lines that are spoken, you know. I mean, nothing beats hearing roll out, right? It gives you chills and it's just, 
It's really, really exciting. We've seen some Transformers that we haven't seen in the past on the screen, so that's very exciting as well. Rise of the Beast, it's like they kind of failed. It Not even failed, but like... I was expecting more of the Maximals, I guess I should say. I was expecting more of them because it's literally named after them. And it felt like it's as billed as a Maximals movie. And it really is a Noah and Mirage movie. And with a little bit of Optimus Prime, who I didn't even speak about yet. Because, listen, Optimus Prime is in this. He has an important role. There's important lessons to be learned, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I still wanted more Optimus. Um, but that's just me. I mean, I felt like it's two hours and 60 minutes. We could have more of him. But we could have more of the Maximals. I think there was just too much going on. Um, that, like, the time, it, it felt a little too stuffed, but at the same time, like, stuff was really dumbed down and, and generic. I don't know. It's very hard to explain. I think you guys will understand when you see it. But overall, I had a blast. I plan to go see it again. I plan to see it in 4DX because I think that's going to be amazing. And I'm also kind of addicted to 4DX now because it's really fun. I've been three times and each time it just gets better and better. It's an absolute experience. You feel like you're in the movie. And I feel like this is one of the movies that you should definitely see in 4DX um, because I think it's going to be an absolute blast. It's fun. It sounds great, right? It, it's beautiful to watch for the most part. It, 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 I give this thing a three out of five. I don't think it's bad by any means, but I don't think it's perfect by any means, but we're getting there, okay? This is probably the best Transformers, taking outside Bumblebee, movie since the first one, okay? So we're finally, I feel like we're getting back to this spot, and I'm very, very excited to see where things go from here. Um, like I said, that ending, I was like, what? I was not expecting it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a blast, and, and I kind of fell in love with Mirage. Listen. I don't know. You guys let me know if you're excited for Rise of the Beasts down below in the comments. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. Follow me over on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and check me out at mamasgeeky.com. Ask me whatever you want in the comments as long as it's not major spoilers. I'll let you know. Be sure to check this thing out when it hits theaters this weekend, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time.